After my last hike in the Drakensberg, where I honestly questioned why I put myself through this at times, I felt I needed a relaxed trail for my next adventure, and decided I had to get onto the trails of the Farni Water. This is David. He hasn't been in any of my videos, but he has been an essential part of my hiking journey over the last couple of years. Joining us on a number of hikes before I started video journaling them. It was great to have Dave back on the trail, and after what felt like years without him around, we had a lot to chat about on our relaxed three-night, 46km journey, spanning most of the Fani Buerta, but intentionally leaving out just one night, which would have made this hike 58 kilometers long. The Fani Buerta has always been on my list of hikes to do, and if you're watching this, it's likely on yours too, since it has historically been regarded as one of the best hikes and must-do hikes in South Africa. The history of the Fani Buerta dates back to the 1960s, when a man called Fani Buerta, who from what I can find was the Minister of Forestry, started exploring the area in the hopes of creating a hiking trail. The trail was then officially opened in 1973 when 30 hikers hiked 45 kilometers from Lone Creek Falls over Mount Anderson to Mackmack Falls, where Wurza then officially opened the trail. Wurza's plan was that this trail would become part of a network of trails called the National Hiking Way System, developing one long trail from the Sotlandsberg along the escarpment to the Cedarberg Mountains in the Western Cape. This incredible plan, however, was never realized and is now a reminder of what could have been. Even today, in fact, this hike is a reminder of what once was a busy hiking route dried up from what looks to be a lack of funds to maintain the trail and the huts. So while the Fani Buerta is hutted, I do need to warn you that these huts are a bit run down and rarely maintained, but in comparison to having to find a place to sleep in the wild and set up camp, after a long day, seeing a hut at the end of the trail made me feel right at home and as if I was slackpacking. Even so, we ended up sleeping on the patios of these huts every night, a place we felt more comfortable than inside the stuffy, rundown rooms. There is something special about having a breeze blow over you at night, whether that be in a cave or on a stoop. The trail maintenance seems to be lacking too, with the majority of the bridges needing some serious work. The bridge, trail and hut upkeep could get worse or better in the future. But what will stay the same is the incredible beauty of this area. And as we hike it over the years to come, the trail and the hikers on it will adapt to the changes and challenges as nature re-guides and reshapes the paths we will walk. So if you're feeling disappointed so far, don't be. The Fani Buerta is still a trail you have to do, and it will always be, even if the human man-made infrastructure disappears, because this route will take you on a journey like no other through varying landscapes, including grasslands, man-made and indigenous forests, amazing waterfalls and mountaintops with majestic views. Hidden gems like the Cathedral Falls, which is only accessible on the Fani Buerta, are marvels not many get to experience. A waterfall that generates a heavy spray up close and a fine mist as you walk towards it, making you feel like you're a character in the Lord of the Rings novels. You will be able to swim in pools that will transport you into a fairy tale, an oasis if you like, to a tired traveller, and you will climb up Mount Moody, which takes you to the highest point in this trail, giving you a chance to gaze down at panoramic views of the low felt below. This hike still holds true to what the creator of it imagined it to be in some way. At its foundation, in fact, it has never changed. Every day, the Fani Buerta offered us something new, giving us time to appreciate what we have in the present, wish away the past, and debate and deliberate the future. As an example, I love the forests and the challenging and endless slogs over the tricky and unstable dilapidated bridges. While Dave basked on the plains and appreciated the views on the hilltops. Both of us, however, were thankful for the day we had, questioned why some things had to change, and wondered what the next day would hold. 
And while we debated the meaning of life on this trip, we both came to the same conclusion on it. That while we planned our course, there was only really and truly one who was going to establish our steps in the future. The Fani Boerte is a trail I hope stays open for generations to come, and it should be on every South African's hiker completion lists. It's one I hope to do again, no matter how it changes, and I think it's a perfect hike for newcomers wanting to see if hiking is something they truly want to take up. For myself, the decision has been made already. I will roam the trails I have access to for as long as my life allows me. And my hope is that the Fani Buerta does the same for you.